I'm Dr. James Wilcox from the Department of Family Medicine, and today we'll discuss shoulder ultrasound. First, we will look at the anterior shoulder, looking at the biceps, tendon, pectoralis, major tendon, subscapularis, and infraspinatus, and the superior shoulder, rounding out the rotator cuff with supraspinatus, looking at the AC joint, and the posterior shoulder, looking at the shoulder joint itself for any effusions, looking at the substernal notch for any um, cysts that could be uh, pinching on the artery or the nerve. So first, we will position our probe um, so that the marker dot is pointed towards the patient's right or towards their head. We'll have the patient place their hand palm up on their knee. Then we'll first palpate and look for that biceps tendon. We'll place the probe in a transverse position and try and find the biceps tendon. This patient has a myotendinous junction between his deltoid um, muscles, and so we will have him rotate his arm just a little bit so that we can better identify his biceps tendon. And there it is right in the center of the screen. We can wag the tail of the probe back and forth and see the anisotropy of that tendon as it appears and disappears. So don't mistake it for a missing tendon. Then we can rotate 90 degrees on that tendon to determine if the tendon is um, completely there. We'll look at this in long axis. And the tendon is going to be between the greater and lesser tuberosity. So you just move lateral and medial until you find it, and then follow the tendon down to the myotendinous junction. Here we'll rotate 90 degrees and see that pectoralis major tendon in the middle of the screen as it inserts onto the humeral head. See if there's any ruptures or tears within the pectoralis major tendon. Next, we'll go back up to the um, home base of the biceps tendon, and we'll have our patient externally rotate his arm, which will bring the subscapularis rotator cuff tendon into better view. You can see on this image here, it looks kind of like a bird's beak. It's a triangular structure there. And we kind of fan and uh, slide back and forth through the tendon. Then we always rotate 90 degrees so we can view the tendon in short axis as well. Usually there's some septations within the subscapularis tendon, but we're looking for any large tears that could be a sign of pathology within the tendon. Next, we'll look at the infraspinatus, have our patient internally rotate his arm. And again, the in infraspinatus is going to be on the lateral side of the shoulder. Again, that bird's beak appearance looking at the fibrillar pattern, that it's nice and smooth and no broken large gaps within the tendon, which would be a sign of a rotator cuff tear. We're also looking at the cortical bone to make sure that it's nice and smooth and no signs of fraying. Next, we're going to have the patient go in a modified crass position, placing his hand on the back side of his hip, and this brings the supraspinatus tendon out. Superspinatus tendon again is going to have that bird's beak appearance and long axis. We're going to start at the acromion and go down just a little bit to get a good full view of the supraspinatus and long axis. Again, looking for any disruptions in the cortex of the bone or any disruptions in the tendon itself. Then we go short axis again, looking for disruptions. Next, we're going to follow his clavicle bone out lateral to find the acromioclavicular joint. Place the probe in transverse on the acromioclavicular joint. You can zoom in, and we're looking for any large pockets of effusion or any uh, osteophytes, which could be a sign of arthritis. Next, we'll look at the posterior shoulder. We'll follow the spine of the scapula out to a soft spot, which is where we'll find the posterior joint of the shoulder. And you can see here the humeral head right there and the labrum on top of the glenoid. We'll go a little bit lateral so we can find the scapular notch. 
right here. Often you will be able to see the suprascapular artery as it's pulsing within that notch. Um, this can is a uh, associated with a nerve, which can sometimes be impinged by cyst. So it's always great to evaluate this part of the shoulder as well. Next, we'll go back to the shoulder joint itself. Have our patient internally and externally rotate his shoulder, looking for any signs of effusion, which would be right next to the labrum. You can also see cortical irregularities and osteophytes from arthritis. Thank you for watching.